السلام عليكم وبركاته. I think I mentioned that that's from the evolution that to Westerners not being interested in religion. Yeah. The Muslims did not make the justification, but I think we see more and more that the youth, most Muslim youth are also not interested in religion. Why do you think there's a reason for this and and this be reversed? Yeah, good question. I mean, my, from my own assessment of things, and I'm not, I don't have access to all, uh, I haven't spoken to every young person or old person for that matter, but my own kind of like limited assessment and something maybe from my own experience. I don't think, it sounds like a strange thing, and allow me to finish the point, because it may sound some, some almost like sacrilege. But I don't think the quest in many ways is to get people interested in religion. For me personally, I wasn't inspired by the fact that there are five prayers a day, inherently. I think it's an amazing thing if you look at the reasons behind that, but the fact that there are five, you know, hypothetically, whether to be eight, it wouldn't have been a greater encouragement for me to become Muslim. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I mean by religion. And even the term religion is one of these kind of like Latin relics that's kind of repeated in our language. Religion is also a, a strange word because it, I don't think deen, which is the word we use as, as, as Muslims, it really means religion. It's more of a, of a sacred lifestyle, like and, uh, these coordinates, prophetic coordinates. Some are stringent in that they're, they have an obligation. I'm not trying to relativize in everything. There is a re because they're so significant, they're so important to the maintenance of the spiritual reality, sometimes to, right to the core of our belief. An example, the utterance of the shahadatain, or the five daily prayers, or that you have to make wudu before salah. But it's not the essence. And I think the thing that most people are interested or disinterested is the fact that they see often the, the, the proponents of religion as not really embodying that which they're claiming to have, or rather which their religion claims to give. So if you have somebody that's, you know, taking all the vitamin tablets, but they look unhealthy, why would you want to take the regime of vitamins? What's the point? It's much easier just to give up. You know, and I think, you know, that in, in previous, you know, pre-modern cultures, you'd always have the village saint. You'd have the person that, just by looking at them, they were so illuminated, you'd be like, yeah, that's why. That's why. And, but you can't articulate that, you can't write that down in history books. And I think the only... Battery's dying, yeah? That's a sign, I think. Bismillah. You know, and I think, uh, kind of, a lot of the time, you know, in a, in a contemporary context, both youth and elders, I mean, I don't think the youth are just to blame, you know, with respect to our elders, but I think if there were more examples of people that had trodden an authentic spiritual path and were living it, then more youth would be inspired. I don't know. That's, that's my experience in, in Yemen, because the youth in Yemen, they don't do it out begrudgingly, they, they do it out of love, because they see their fathers and their grandfathers, and it's like, how, why would I not want this, you know? So the idea of just coming to a medjlis and donning a kind of clothing that you only wear for a medjlis, it almost becomes like a cultural relic. It's, it's, it's devoid of that real essence. And I think, you know, due, due to access of information, you know, almost a saturation of information, many people are like, I don't really know why I have to be interested in this. What does it, what does it have for me? And I don't necessarily mean that in an egotistical sense. Because, you know, I think most youth are intelligent enough to recognize that they're not being called to go to a, 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 a gathering or a form of vicar or prayer, you know, in order for some kind of physical product at the end of it. It's not like take your prize and go to the next prayer. No one's expecting that. Most people have the intelligence to understand that. But it's something deeper. And that's why it's interesting that many Muslim youth are going to the same drink that I was raised on. Music, popular culture, you know, there's a reason why people are going to that. There are far more distractions today than there ever were, even like five years ago. I mean, this is so recent. 
and you know, we're almost the, the human mind we're failing to really kind of apprehend this. We're just such a saturation of information, we don't know how to process it. What's the solution? You know, if you look at a lot of the hadith towards the end of time, it places a real prevalence on taking care of your own self. Not to the detriment of community and family and society, but if you're not rectified, really what hope do you, do you have to give? If, if you're not illuminated, how can you light the people around you? You know, so really to like work on these realities within oneself. How do we disseminate that amongst society, youth and elders alike? By being those people. By someone who cares, by being someone that keeps it real, by somebody that, you know, if they're not pleased with their own attempt at praying, then they, they seek and they search, and Allah will always give to you, like, you know, I wasn't even searching for Islam, really, I wasn't even searching for Islam, and Allah just kind of thrust it upon me, you know, and I think many people, they are searching, and, you know, Allah will give, you know, you know, Allah will give, and I think, you know, just to re reignite that search in people, being a source of inspiration, not putting people off. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, And this is when he sent uh, Sayyidina Mu'ayyad ibn Jabal to Yemen. You know, these deeply spiritual people, Al-Imanu Yemen and Al-Hikmatu Yemaniya. Faith is Yemeni. These are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Faith is Yemeni. And wisdom is Yemeni. You know? And they're the only country which became Muslim in its entirety without any war. There was no defense, there was no combat. There, and it was the only country in which the Prophet actually fell into prostration out of gratitude to Allah because they just, just Iman just spread throughout their hearts. You know? And being amongst the Yemeni people, they're wise people, they're inspiring people. But even with that, there was, there's, a, there's a sacred methodology. Yassiru wa la tu'asiru. Make things easy. Be a source of facilitation. Wa la tu'asiru. Don't make things difficult. Don't complicate things. Don't convolute things for people before they've even stepped through the door. Oh, you don't really want to sound because it's far too complex for someone like you to understand. You clearly don't have the discipline. You don't. And then what was the next thing he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Bashiru wa la tu'nafiru. You know, they say, they say, give glad tidings. I wouldn't have known what that meant as a 16 year old. Glad tidings? You'd have to go back maybe 150 years before. So, a, 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 maybe a more like relevant translation is like be positive. Be a source of encourage, encouragement. Don't put people off. Don't put people off with your pseudo religiosity. Keep it real. You know, you're, not, you're not guiding anyone, you're only a conduit. That's the best you can hope for. Allah's the only one that guides. You know, and if you're not being that vessel, then how can you contain anything? You know, if your cup's already overflowing with yourself, with your own ego, how can you contain that divine light? You know, you know. and I think these, these are principles which need to be... You know, and sometimes it's about not even talking about religion. In fact, I say most of the time. Because for religion, a lot of time people think, oh, it's that guy that, that I had a bad experience with. Once again, we're talking about it is people of religion, not necessarily the actual doctrinal tenets. I think most uh, Muslims are kind of like, I don't even like the word astray. Just actually, a lot of them are very sincere in their search. They just haven't found someone to take them by the hand. And a lot of them, it's because they're so sincere and authentic, they're just like, screw this whole thing all together. I don't want to be a fake. I'm going to keep it real with Allah. So be, you know, to, to speak about, I don't know. Things which are relevant to people, whatever it may be. Spending time in good company, that's another good thing. You know. Having a time for the youth, place for the youth to, to relax is why I love this coffee shop because you know, if the only expression of like religion, let's say prophetic lifestyle, if our only taster of the prophetic way is in a very formalized, ritualistic you know, space like the mosque, which is beautiful because it's there, because this it's, an, it's a sacred space and it should be maintained that way. If that's our only encounter with religion, then we, we start to develop almost this kind of psychosis, like this schism. Okay, take the heart off, take, take you know, take the 
the soul bath and just go out and be me. Well, why can't you be me in the masjid? Why can't you be me and be authentically Muslim wherever you are at work? In Islam, this, this idea of deen just being this kind of confined to the masjid is not that. I think a lot of youth are explained, you know, there's the opportunity just to explain things in that way. They find it appealing. I think most people are searching that. No. Most people are not searching a life with, with no guidelines. You know, even uh, anarchists have guidelines. Anarchy is just such a joke. I had a friend, he converted to Islam, he became Muslim in Manchester. He was a mature student and he was a bit of a, like an eccentric Englishman. That's why we can get away with eccentric headgear and nobody will look at us funny, except if you're in KL. Manchester people are like, yeah, cool. <laughs> no. So, but he was an eccentric Englishman and he, uh, he was a really interesting guy. He was like one of the rigging people for Led Zeppelin. You know Led Zeppelin? Stuff it a lot, how do you know Led Zeppelin? You know the, you know the, the, the gigs? Anyway, he became Muslim. SubhanAllah, do you not think that's an amazing thing? The guy that was doing the gigs for Led Zeppelin becomes a Muslim and finds Islam something he wants to do. You know? And, you know, his kind of, you know, experience of the deen was not through, like, you've got to pray, you've got to do that. It was just being around, you know, real Muslims. And we need to spread that. You know, be a source of, you know, don't, don't, don't be bakhil. You know, Dawah is not about being preachy. It's just about being real and having a cup that's full, working on your own cup, so it starts to overflow. People liked being in the company of the Prophet, you said. You've got to understand that. Allah make us all conduits of authentic transformation, inshallah. Keep it real with ourselves, inshallah. People start to keep it real with us. Allah, it's a deep question. It's a great question.